Uh, let's now look at stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers today. With me in the studio is a lawyer and social development advocate, Jide Ulogun. Jide, good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Thank great, you. Great. And on Skype from Enugu is Ambrose Igboki. Ambrose, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Great nice, to see you. Great. Nice to see you, really. Okay. Let's uh, begin from Daily Trust on one of the stories that is really trending right now. Fanny Coyote under fire for attacking Daily Trust reporter. Uh, we stand by our correspondent. Media Trust uh, issued out a statement on that. And NUJ, IPC, Amnesty International, CPJ, Serap, others react uh, to the outburst by a former Minister of Aviation. My encounter with ex-aviation minister, uh, uh, A.O. Charles, the reporter, uh, wrote the, the chronicle of what hap actually happened. And I guess my guest would like to talk about this as we get along. From there, let's go to Blueprint newspaper. As WHO certifies Nigeria free, polio free, I am now fulfilled, Buhari declares. Uh, Lords Dangote, Bill Gates, Mecca Ofo, and others says, like polio, we can defeat COVID-19. Okay. All right, from the blueprint, let's go to national economy. Governor Matawali presents gold bars to PMB, that's President Muhammad Buhari, as Zamfara targets full-scale mining. And federal government pledges support to, for state vows to tackle illegal mining. Uh, that's the national economy. News Direct is next now. Buhari approves one-year waiver of import levy on electricity meters. Stakeholders react to this. Okay. Leadership is next. We will defeat COVID-19 like polio. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari is saying this and lists nine priority areas to improve livelihood of Nigerians. And Nigeria receives... Certification as WHO declares Africa polio free, uh, polio virus free. Uh, UNICEF others congratulate Nigeria, call for increased routine immunization. Uh, 40 coronavirus herbal medicines currently undergoing review. NAFDAQ is saying this. All right, that's leadership newspaper. The last we're seeing now is Daily Times. Daily Times says Nigeria's 2020 GDP contraction equivalent to entire 2021 budget. Well, that's mind-boggling. Now, Nigeria's 2020 uh, uh, GDP contraction equivalent to entire 2021 budget. Okay. Now, gentlemen, let's get into one of the stories that is really hot uh, out there right now. In fact, social media has gone bonkers with uh, this uh, story and the video has go gone viral as well. Uh, I believe, uh, you, uh, Jide, you have seen uh, the videos of... Uh, uh, former aviation minister Femi Fani uh, verbally assaulting a journalist. And, and uh, Ambrose, I guess you have also seen this. But let me start with you, Ambrose, because this is your uh, uh, immediate constituency before I come to uh, GD here. I, I wonder what you make of this, because when we often talk about assault on journalists, assault on journalism as a profession, and all of that, uh, a lot of people say this is one of them. Yes, um, what transpired uh, in the uh, uh, Cross River State uh, between Fanny Kayode and the Ayo Charles, the editor, uh, was, um, I mean, the reporter, was, uh, in fact, was very shameful. Um, uh, as you said, uh, reporters and uh, journalists do suffer all these kind of uh, assaults, uh, from physical assaults in terms of uh, actually inflicting bodily injuries on journalists. As well, this one is uh, a new high, which is a verbal assault, where a man was uh, humiliated, was almost dehumanized because he was trying, he's trying to do his job professionally. I mean, what was the question that even warranted this? A man was going around, he's not an official, he's not a public servant, he's not a government appointee, he's not a political uh, uh, office holder, he was going around states. Uh, uh, inspecting projects in what capacity now when you do such things where you don't have any official capacity to do such a thing it, bega it beggars the question that how are you doing this why are you doing this who is footing the bills because when public officers embark on this kind of trip their bills are footed uh, by the mini their administrative or their uh, departments or agencies or if it's political office or that by the political office offices 
or by the nature of themselves of which or to which they, they are funded. Now, a question was thrown to you because we are going around, um, moving around the country without no capacity in, in official way. And then somebody, a journalist asks you, how are you funding? How are you bankrolling? Or who is bankrolling this trip? I mean, the simple answer would have been, uh, I am the one bankrolling this. Or you tell us how you are coming about going around the country using who's funding it. But what did he do? Um, according to him, he has a short fuse, which means that he is short-tempered. For somebody to have of his standing, to admit, admit that kind of thing in public, and for him to be berate, to berate a, a man, a, a fellow man like because of a simple question, is very, very unfortunate. But the most unfortunate thing is that the journalist himself capitulated to the subjugation of uh, 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 Femi Fine Coyote. And the, it was compounded by the fact that his own colleagues, your other journalists, were seated there looking helplessly why this tirade was going on against their own profession. It was not an assault on uh, Mr. Ayo. It was an assault on the profession of journalism. And if it would happen to lawyers, maybe, he would have seen a workout or maybe something like that. But the journalists sat down as if uh, there were chickens being beaten by the rain. All right. And whatever happened, and then they kept quiet there. That okay. was a humiliation of the profession of journalism. And it's mm -hmm. a new high in life. Okay. All right, uh, Ambrose, we'll come back to you on this. GD, I wonder how you react to this. You, you heard Ambrose, Ambrose there say, if he, to, if he were uh, uh, lawyers, the reaction would have been different. I, am I aligning with that? Recently, uh, the president addressed the lawyers at a conference and expressed the fact that he may not have respect for the rule of law. But the lawyers were laughing, <laughs> you see, until after the conference, they awoke again to consciousness. So. Uh, I, I want to say, perhaps if it were to be with lawyers, it may not be different. Why? And we are addressing the tr critical issue here. Femi Fadikayode has occupied high political offices in Nigeria. Don't we worship politicians in Nigeria? That's the big question. So the journalists are likely to have been intimidated. All right? Even whether he is out of office or not. And having said that, I, I want to go to HR. We talk about emotional intelligence. So on the part of Femi Fanikayo, they, he needs a bit of emotional intelligence. You see, blowing the fuse was unnecessary. If somebody asked you, how do you bankroll your trips? Simple answer, I do by myself or the state sponsors. I mean, simple, but is it not in the gene of the high and mighty in Nigeria to be unquestionable. And that is a tradition we need to begin to embrace. You must be accountable. And that is why perhaps a child in the UK will be different from a child in Nigeria. A child in the UK can question you. Hmm. Why are you doing this? Who will be responsible for this? But you dare not do it in Nigeria and Africa. And that is probably where, why we are where we are now. So I, I express... Or, or, maybe, or maybe that is derivable from the cultures where we have re high respect exactly, and reverence exactly, for, exactly. for elders or something. And sometimes this respect is taken too far okay. that we cannot ask for accountability. All right. But there should be a room we, we, for we, that. We, so, and now uh, a bigger uh, crisis mm. has been generated for Fani Kayode himself. But I'm not surprised. Mm. If you have monitored his personality, he may not be far away from how he has expressed himself. Right. So... And for me, I think we should just see how we can probably begin to engage those who occupy offices that they are responsible to All the right. people. Okay. Now, Ambrose, uh, let, let me come to you finally before we round. On, 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 in an ideal situation, how, how should the journalists have responded to that situation? Well, for me, the journalists would have insisted on the question he has asked. He would not mm. have chicken out. He would have found different ways to uh, re-ask this question. For example, if he is offended by who is bankrolling, because the question was who is bankrolling. Yeah. You, you cannot say, oh, sir, okay, let me re-ask, uh, are you the one bankrolling it? How are you funding it? He will he say, with due respect, sir, give him according to the respect as a former minister or a big man or a VIP, as we call it <laughs> in Nigeria. You are calling, but you insist on your question. 
and until you are handed out by the security personnel, if they are going to hand you out, and that will more or less bring out the beast in the person that we are trying to uh, talk to. So he would have asked more, and then at the same time insisted on getting the answer from him. Unless I just respond to my question. Uh, we need this question so that Nigerians can be uh, more aware of what is going on and all those kind of things. But he chickened out. And uh, if, if he had insisted, what would have happened, predicted would have happened, might be that maybe security personnel would have bundled him out. And that would become more news and better for him as a journalist. And what demeaning for Mr. Femi Fanekayode. Uh, so uh, Nigerian journalists should learn how to insist on questions, especially if it derives from the questions that would benefit the general public. Oh. All right, let's head straight to the papers now. And I begin with the Daily Trust. Fanny Kayode under fire for attacking Daily Trust reporter. We stand by our correspondent media trust, the NUJ IPC Amnesty International, CPJ, Serap, others react. My encounter with ex aviation minister. To the front page of the blueprint now, as WHO certifies Nigeria polio free, I am now fulfilled, Buhari declares. To the front page of the national economy, Governor Matawale presents gold bars to President Muhammadu Buhari as Zamfara targets full-scale mining. We'll be looking at that story shortly. And on the front page of the news director, Buhari approves one-year waiver of import levy on electricity meters. Stakeholders react. All right, let's move to the front page of uh, the leadership newspaper. We will defeat COVID-19 like polio, President Muhammad Buhari speaking there, lists nine priority areas to improve livelihood of Nigerians. Nigeria receives certification as WHO declares Africa polio free. UNICEF others congratulate Nigeria, call for increased routine immunization. Well, finally, on the front page of the Daily Times, Nigeria's 2020 GDP contraction uh, equivalent to entire 2021 budget. All right, gentlemen, let's uh, look, take a look at the story on the front page of uh, the national economy, talking about uh, Governor Matawali, uh, uh, the governor of Zamfara State, looking at uh, uh, full-scale mining. He presented gold bars uh, to the president. And uh, uh, Ambrose, I'm sure you have the fuller development uh, with uh, the issues of mining in Zamfara State which was said to be one of the major drivers of conflict within the state to the extent that it was banned uh, sometime either last year or two years uh, or even three ago. But now that the government is looking into taking this uh, a step further, looking into full-scale mining, I wonder what you make of this development. Well, uh, first of all, is a step in the right direction. Uh, over the last 45 to 50 years, we have uh, turned our attention in the economy fully to oil exploration and exportation. Um, so that has uh, act really adversely affected the other sectors of the non-oil uh, non sector of the economy, uh, which is very detrimental to the Nigerian uh, uh, economy. So it is a step in the right direction. But my worry is this. Uh, the mining and exploitation of natural resources of that nature still resides in the exclusive list uh, in the Nigerian constitution. This has continued to undermine other development in non-oil sector. What the National Assembly needs to do, because what the Tampara State government is doing, though spirited, but it may not take him far, because he has to report to somebody in the Ministry of Solid Minerals or somebody sitting somewhere in Abuja, who will tell him how to exploit the mineral resources in his own locality. Mm. So the best way, first of all, is to remove that uh, 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 mineral exploitation from the exclusive list and put it to the concurrent list so that states can design uh, uh, project management on how to be able to exploit the natural resources in their area. For example, there is coal in Enugu, there is, the, uh, there is a tin, there is uh, all kinds of tantalite, there are all kinds of uh, mineral resources that can be exploited and the, you know, 
done but, to but and Bruce, if I may export. interrupt your line of thought, you know the process uh, which uh, if we are going to look at uh, uh, amendments uh, now with regards to taking out uh, mining from the exclusive list to the concurrent, you know the procedures it will go through to achieve that. Do we have uh, the political will to push this forward? Well, if we don't have the political will, we will continue to lie in economic doldrums because the truth is that we cannot continue to operate the way we have been doing, especially in the post-COVID era that we are going to enter and we're already going into recessions, a lot of uh, what economists are contracting, a lot of uh, uh, economists are actually uh, going to uh, be run down because of the effect of COVID-19. So what we are saying is that well, it's either we uh, get down, roll our sleeves as a country, and make the changes we need to do. For example, in the issue of electricity too, we still retain power with some, uh, some funny laws that say you cannot develop more than 10 megawatts. And then we come to mining, we come to exploitation of mineral. It's, if we now have the political will to do, these things can be done under one, under two, three months before December, it can be done. But as you said, do we have the political will? It, it is left for us to uh, debate about that. But right. if we don't have the political will, then we will suffer the economic consequences. Okay, let's bring uh, the conversation into the studio now. Uh, I, I wonder what you make of this development. What concerns you the most? Is it the movement from the exclusive list to the concurrent or the issues of uh, insecurity that this um, mining has triggered w in, in the state? We are even discussing moving it from the exclusive uh, list because we have not effectively benefited from these resources. I know that recently the president himself decried losing about $1 billion mm. to not maximizing this gold reserve. What I would advise the country is to understand the concept of wealth. You either generate wealth directly or you generate it indirectly. If you want to embark on it indirectly, while stopping the illegal miners, you partner and collaborate with countries that have excelled globally, China, takes about 12% of gold mine business in the world, has a very huge profile when it comes to gold mining. And China is our friend. And by the way, are we saying that the illegal miners are not making money from it? Mm -hmm. So if prosperity has anything to do with our governance intentions, we should be able to deal with this, with this, this issue. And now in criminology, it's been established that Criminals sometimes get higher offer from those who pay them than legitimate employees. So if some people are maximizing wealth that should come to us illegally and using it to dislodge the peace of the nation, because we have admitted sometimes that some of the sponsors of bandits are illegal miners. Are we now saying we don't know them or if this is my private business and some elements are coming to plunder it, that I, I'm helpless in it. I mean, it's been established also that a gold mine deposit in Zamfara State may end us at about $2 billion annually if properly engaged. Mm -hmm. And we are not just not talking about Zamfara State alone. We speak about Oshun State, some Kebbi states, and some other states in the country. So we need to really look at the fact that it's not just about having resources. It's about being resourceful on how you engage your resources. Nigeria so, uh, what is would be the proper engagement of, of uh, gold, for instance, that is uh, that Zamfara State government is looking at exploring? It's, it's so fantastic. You know, there's this concept, this presidential artisanal uh, initiative, which is to empower the local miners. And some of the products, are what you are now presenting to the president, commendably. And the CBN we now buy, to boost our external uh, reserve, all right? It's fine. And you can now turn around and consider governance wisdom. We also have illegal refiners in some parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Rather than run after them, dislodge them, bring them together. If our refineries cannot work under the government and some groups are coming together to refine oil, you must be interested in how they carry out their own exploit. So it's the same. So you engage these illegal miners, bring them together, and see how we can maximize our resources. Because whether you like it or not, even when you go collaborating with foreign powers, you are still exposed. Mm. The best capacity you can develop 
is local capacity. After all, the international and imported capacity was once developed somewhere. Mm, and you absolutely. talk, and if you want to learn about countries that have done well with their gold reserves, you talk about China, you talk about Russia, you talk about <laughs> Indonesia, you talk about even Botswana in Africa, and see what you can, uh, what you can do. We live on wealth in Nigeria, but have we been able to transfer the wealth resources to wealth capital? And I think that is where I must commend the president for looking in that direction. Nigeria has no business being a poor country. We are really, really blessed. But All we right. need to be resourceful about it. All Whether right. from the federal government or state government, let's collaborate and create wealth in Nigeria. Let's quickly poverty. bring in uh, Ambrose Ibuke for his final words before we wrap up uh, this uh, segment. Uh, from what Jude Ologun is saying, Nigeria has no business being poor. So for you, how do we explore this for the benefit of the economy? Well, I keep on reiterating that most of the time we do what we call symptomatic uh, uh, treatment without going to the root causes. There's no way state and federal government can collaborate in this venture if the federal government is in total control of our resources. So if we want to have a long-term uh, you know, effect on the economy, of diversifying our economy, we should have the political will to start from now, to start looking at our constitution and see the way it was, con uh, it was configured. The constitution sounds more like a unitary system of government rather than a federal system of government. So unless we be able to restructure this country in line with fiscal uh, federalism, they won't go anywhere. All these all things we are doing now are just cosmetic uh, activities. They are cosmetic activities that will not, you know, do anything for us. So the best thing is, first of all, let us start by restructuring the, uh, the fiscal federalism to be more effective so that our economy can grow. All right, uh, Ambrose Igboke, thank you for your time on the newspaper review this morning. Chideo Lugu, thank you so much for speaking with us. God bless Nigeria.